During the FE exam, you will have to solve problems on internal forces in members. And in this video, I will provide you with a practice problem on internal forces to help you prepare for these questions. But first, let me remind you that the FE exam or Fundamentals of Engineering is the first step to getting your professional engineering license. And through the videos on this channel, including this one, you will learn not only how to properly prepare for the exam, but how to ensure you pass the FE exam. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the FE exam. And if you leave questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. So let's dive into the internal forces practice problem. This sample problem has been provided to us by Prep FE. Prep FE is one of the most effective FE exam self-study prep services out there and happens to be one of the most affordable too. Prep FE is an app that gives you access to countless sample FE problems to bolster your self-study efforts. You can visit prepfe.com forward slash redeem and use the discount code in the description of this video to receive 10% off and get some great FE practice problems. So here's the problem. A table has been set up to aid in the drawing of an influence line. What is most nearly the internal force member in AF when the influence line point load is placed at joint B? Assume the moving point load is equal to one kilonewton. So what we have going on here is you can see the truss, a member here, and think about the influence line across this truss, and I'll talk about influence lines in a moment, but essentially, Imagine that there is a one kilonewton point load that's going to move from A to joint B to joint C. When the load is at joint A, the force in AF is zero kilonewtons. When the point load is at joint C, the force in member AF is zero kilonewtons. They're telling you this. They want to know that when you put the one kilonewton point load at joint B, then what's the force in AF? And they give you some options here to the right. So the first thing that I'd like to do here is let's talk about what an influence line is. In engineering, an influence line graph, the variation of a function, such as the shear felt in a structure member at a specific point on a beam or truss, is caused by a unit load placed at any point along that structure. We all kind of remember the influence lines in school. You've probably taken them before. But what I want to do is really break this down uh, kind of one step at a time so you can see what's going on here. Now, again, they're asking for the force in AF, when there's a one kilonewton point load here and, and, and they've told you what it is for this and this but what I'd like to do to start is the point load remember moves from joint A to joint B to joint C so I'm gonna walk you through each one of these joints just so you can see how this is done you know in the future you might have to solve it for each of the joints just so you're aware of it so again here's the table that they've given us so let's look at how you would solve the force in AF when the point load is at A which you can see here in red, that's what the reactions will look like, right? So you want to think of the moment around C, point C, and this is important that, you know, this tells you the positive direction, that little arrow. So if you look at it, we have a force AY going up here, right? We're calling it negative because it's going against the positive direction. And that's really the key to this problem. It's simple math, right? But it's knowing the right denominations of positive and negative. Then you're adding the one, the point load, which is one, and then your distances are 10 for both because they're both here. They're 10 meters from the point of the moment that's going around, right? So you can solve it out, AY equals one kilonewton, and then you use the method of joints at A and you do a simple arithmetic problem, right? And you figure out that the force of AF is equal to zero. And remember, again, you have the positive one going down, and then you have the AY going in the opposite direction. And that's what they gave you, the zero. Now, let's look at it at point B, which is what they're asking us in the question. So now you're going to do, again, the moment around C with the positive in the same direction. And now you have a force coming up, what they're calling negative AY. And then you have a load come... I'm sorry, the force is still coming up here at AY because you're always thinking about the member AF, right? So it's coming up here negative at 10 meters. The point load is now at B, so it's 1, it's positive because it's going in this direction, right? 
and it's only five meters from the point of moment. So your AY that you solve is 0.5 kilonewtons. Then you use the method of joints at joint A again, and you do the, again, you do your arithmetic, and you find that the force of AF equals 0.5 kilonewtons. Negative is, again, denominating the direction of it, but the force itself is 0.5 kilonewtons. Now if we want to look, take it the next step, and we want to look at C, now the point loads at C, again you're taking the negative AY at 10 meters away from the point of the moment, but now that's all you have because the point load goes through the point of moment, so you don't count that. So AY equals zero, and if you add the force at AF when the point load is at C, is zero, which again, they told you. I'm just showing you how to solve these so that you know for the different points on the truss. So it's a pretty simple problem overall, and we know that the answer provided is 0.5, right, which is C, the correct answer. The whole key to remember, though, is the positive direction. They're taking the moment positive in this direction, which means this needs to be designated, that AY, as a negative in your equations. And this is something that's bigger than just this problem. Sometimes on the FE exam and the PE exam as well, you know how to solve something, but you just put the put that designation negative or positive wrong, and then that gives you the, the wrong answer. And that's kind of how they trick you. So be careful when it comes down to that. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In an upcoming video, I will solve a practice problem on how to determine the bending moment in a beam. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And these tips are tips that you can't get anywhere else. Believe me, you won't want to miss a single video. And I encourage you to ask questions in the comments, and I will read and respond to them in future videos. So maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover, or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.